all our days are passed away in thy wrath, and we spend our years as a tale that is told. Follow the bonds. Forgive me. The chances of the native prince being alive are 1 in 64 billion. I'm pregnant and unmarried. What is this? Theodore Swift is my business. Where, oh where, might he find safe haven? But of course. Father. I stay to bring all to its conclusion. <laughs> Inspector Reed, explain to me once again how it is you consider yourself fit for purpose. I have headaches. Mr. Aveline, what else do you wish me to say to you? Perhaps that you understand for why you suffer such affliction. No? Allow me, therefore. A man shot you in it. Warren card, now. Your preparations are made, are they? For Bournemouth? Well, not my preparations, but yes, they are made. And you would have me invalided away from here before your journey south? I would. Do you recall, Fred? The night we were called to Miller's Court to attend the remains of Miss Kelly. You believe I will ever forget? This was your chair. That was your brandy. And we drank in the hope that those remains the hard edges of those images stamped into our minds that they, they might somehow be dulled. But there is nothing can dull it. Not Brandy, not Bournemouth. We spoke that night of how, having seen his acts in such detail, of how we knew them as though they belonged to us ourselves. How, therefore, we felt that if only we might lay our eyes upon him, but then we would without proof, without witnessing, without any evidence of any kind, we might look into him and simply know him. Well, Edmund, do you say that you have found Jack the Ripper? No, Fred. But there is another circle I now see coiled about me. Another snake set to swallow its tail. Yet another Whitechapel evil whose scheme is yet to be determined. And that knowing, Chief Inspector, the knowing certainty of purpose. It slides into view. This day, the next, it comes. And then, and then this work will be rid of me once and for all. With the cattle, Mr. Beth. Not on the passenger line, Mr. Ackerman. Passengers get watched. Livestock does not. I am grateful to you, sir, for what you have uncovered. You're a credit to us, to all we newspaper men. Well, I'm flattered, I'm sure. But, Mr. Ackerman, you did not bunk down with the heifers all the way to London just so you might give me the glad hand. I need your proof. And I yours, sir. I do not feed you information for gratis. You are to provide in kind. Think I carried out to dinner with a man I've never met, do you? Trust must be earned, Mr. Best. Those we chase, you and I. This monster, Swift. He saw this done to me. The money he hid. 
The funds for which you searched but could not find, sir. Their journey to this city brought death with it. Fifty-five. Man, woman, and child. Amongst that number, one I loved. Now you doubt my commitment. One more time. I shall take what I have and go to Pintalone. The thing itself, in good time. But for now, a sample. Those soldiers' tunics are red, if you have my meaning. And their deaths relate to all you would now elaborate upon. Something else for you too, Mr. Best. It's a purpose will get clear, but for now I trusted you for safekeeping. Until we next meet, however, you need some advice. You do not have your place of work, you take what you need, and you do not return. You do not take a step without that, you do so in caution. Fear is your friend, Mr. Best. Fear keeps us alive. I'll send for you again once a place of greater safety is found. Doctor is yet to clarify. I disembark here. And my file rises. Into the heartburn, Mr. Ackerman. The fucking death of me. Which should tell you something. You think yourself a plague to me. The reason I'm run out of North America. You're not. I expand my empire. Residing here suits my needs. I worry more after the fucking heartburn than I do after you. Oh, the business. I gotta think you come here without encouragement of one form or another. Without assistance from some other prick. No, it's no one. Who promises it? Tell me who. I won't have you killed. This means best. Fred Best and Star. Mr. Ackerman. Jesus Christ, Captain. Did you really? Fresh corpse arrived. American, I'm told. Let's hope it catch him. His name's Ackerman, sir. Ralph Ackerman. Reporter, resident of New York City. Pages torn from his notebook, but all else intact. His hands were rolled whilst he was torturing. And then, a coup de grace betwixt his eyes. Did he give them the answers they sought, therefore? Grace. Hotels. Boarding houses. No record of him, Mr. Reed. Look here. Left luggage stub in his billfold. Not a large case, and only a few items. He did not mean to remain with us long. Tell him what else, Constable. Sir. He was seen. Rubenstein's, an early supper taken in the company of one who's well recognized in these parts. Another hacker, Fred Best. Continue your work, Captain. Mr. Grace, let's look at the Royal Exchange, the Reuter office within, every piece of reportage on Mr. Ackerman has produced within two years, say. Inspector Drake, it is an old habit, but let us go call on Mr. Best. 
ransack, abandon. What a best. Do we imagine they found what they hunted for? The man himself, or something he made. Whichever. We must assume that whatever investigation saw the errant New Yorker, Mr. Ackerman's brains put out, I'm well, Mr. Best is set on the same. There is a view down the street as I asked. Oh, finest, sir. Hmm. Let us hope so. Where is it to take me, Theodore? Do you think I have matters to attend? We will summer a lesson that must practically be learned. And what lesson is that, Theodore? A lesson, my darling girl to demonstrate just what the future of my channel will be, now you and I have reconciled. This way, sweetheart. Where are they? Where are the men? All in good time. This obsidian, you think you're making an engine for good? Or do you forget who you are? <laughs> think of what? energy and resources you have expended toward the betterment of this world. And yet your single most notable achievement remains this. The death of 55 human beings. <laughs> now, this is what will happen here. Your workers are sent home and this flattened land is repossessed for an altogether grander scheme. Remember just what choices you have. It is my way or the rope. Your to mine. Miss Hart. I was told to find you here, but where are the men? Development is shut down, Jane. I'm sorry. The development is shut down. Why? Why shut down? It is too costly. And it will change not a thing. No, madam. This is a dream, some nightmare of ruin. It is too costly. And it will change not a thing. Gazettes, chronicles, heralds and sentinels, many periodicals, and but one thing. The corruption of the powerful governments and corporations. And one man, one business, the seeming focus of his most recent articles. A man named Swift, a shipping concern named Swiftline. A case was even brought about as a result of his investigating. A congressional inquiry after Mr Ackerman alleged that Mr Swift himself gave order for a troop of Pinkertons to fire on the picket line, which he, Mr Swift, had engaged him to break. Now do we think, Mr Best, a hacker from the Saar. Do we imagine he has joined him in his campaign against the man? Possible Grace, Wilkins up at the ace. He reports a name of the China ear booking in. Fetch yourself there, son. Front oh, no. open. <laughs> Men named Ackerman, no near. Someone shot him in the head. It's time we were elsewhere, best. Man, you see, will be read. Indeed, Captain. Well, you will take me to him and listen as I draw a direct line between the slaughter of the 55 and your wife. Else, why did you save me from those men of hate's division? Could it be that though you were long estranged, you still feel the keen urge to shield your wife from all which might mean her harm, from the wrath of your Lehman Street colleagues? All right, best. Your point's made. But I mean enough. Those are British soldiers. The Royal Niger Company, I believe. We had corresponded for some weeks, you know. He had looked, but 
bail to find uh, Swift was relocating his fortune. And so you showed him and demanded your quid pro quo in return. We agreed Swift must be here in London. Mr. Ackerman travelled to join us, bringing, he assured me, the discovered proof of just what purpose that man, his shipping line and his newly relocated fortune were now set. Do you know what this is? It's a stand hope. It is for seeing things that might otherwise not be seen. Lunch, Silbones, and I have a hunger on me, I tell you. Oh. Hey. Her manners are a little bit better. Mr. Best, Miss Moore. Listen to me, darling. I need a favor. One hour's all I ask, only sit with him. Make sure he goes nowhere. Tastes disagreeable, isn't it? No. He's a good fella. Whatever. Lunch, Mr. Best? Not a name we've heard in some years, Mr. Drake. Now, Mr. Reed. Fred Best fleeing him, eager to avoid ourselves also, so it would seem. This, his own bonded workers shot in protest, where his culpability proved he would face criminal indictment and without a jail term. His assets stripped from him in damages. Quite so, Inspector. So, facing such a fate, the removal from him of his assiduously built fortune, does he perhaps choose to ship it to an altogether friendlier city? It must be shipped in secret, however and change that also into a currency which bears no sign of his honour. Unregistered securities. Bearer bonds. Shipped by anonymous sea cans for London. Sea cans which are loaded aboard goods trains. Goods trains which then might be robbed. At gunpoint on the tracks of Whitechapel. You not see it, sir. See her. The good lady heart. She's held to save you, I know this. But the chances, the happenstance, it is too great. That money, which her man captured, plotted a thief, it is her father's money. Swift money. And we had to tell ourselves she knew not one detail of that plot to rob that train. Now, do we go up there, sir? Ask her direct. Yes, I imagine we do. Make haste! Send her to attic. Cash and bearer bonds. Pull the place apart. Well, uh, Mr. Drake, I knew it would not be long before we were to be reacquainted. Briggs, Henderson Matthews, the upper floors, seen them ransacked, thorough like you. At your service, Mr. Drake. And you, Inspector Reed, are we not to have a fond word of remembrance? In due course, Mr. Swift. I feel sure of it. You will fall, help him. to my cells by your ankles, and yet it seems that I'm in your debt once more. There is no debt between friends, Inspector. Since the moment those engines fell into our world, we have asked ourselves why it is that none have come forward to claim they were robbed. But here, you, your father returned. The answer is suddenly so simple. I wonder. Are you ready to make the report, sir? A man cannot report a burglarizing if he has not been burglarized. And I have not. Explain your presence here in London, Mr. Swift. I visit my family. Nothing, Inspector. Not a thing. Save the safe in the wall, sir. Miss Hart. You will open your strong box. You think 
yourself absolved of the... You are not. I see you. Moses. Dark and sharp as a midsummer shadow. Your lies, your blood blackened heart. I see you. But you cannot show the world what you see, can you, sir? Constable Grace. It's the Reed. Go now, fetch two carpenters, two masons also. And when you have, see that they then remove every floorboard and cut every stone where that money might be hidden. Yes, sir. Send it to me, Amelia. Not I. Hey. How is he, the old man? He will see us all into the ground. How much has he told you, Caitlin? Has he told you just what business it is that he establishes for himself here? Nothing that man could do would surprise me. Then why do you allow him to kick back here? What does he have over you, darling? I really need to tell you. I think you do, Caitlin. By way of example, have you told him yet how you shot Reed? I'm glad that you don't attempt to deny it, Caitlin. How did you do it, Matthew? How did you discover me? Doesn't matter how I did it. How did you do it? It was a choice. A decision. As with all in this life, a right turn, a left turn. You either choose or you allow others to choose for you. And now you'll simply just allow yourself to be folded back into your father's life once more. Well, not but that depends on you, Matthew. On your choice. I won't lie for you. Not on this. You will not protect me. As you once swore such ardent oath to do. No. Then perhaps you will protect your child. The night before I shot Reed. We two like hearts and wanton dogs in a white chapel gutter. The child is in this thing. It might make us new and excited. Gone? Gone where? He spoke only of going to print. That clown is going the right way towards getting himself dead. Then perhaps you'll be considerate enough to show you that road also. He is quite the fountain of knowledge, your Mr. Best. Not a soul hereabouts whose stories he doesn't have cashed away somewhere. You, for example. Matthew. No, I never hit that. I gave you my name. But not your story. I didn't have you begged as judgmental, Hermione. I am not. But I know when I become an option for a man, rather than his priority. 
And I am nothing if not demanding in that regard. It is after her well-being that you now chase around, is it not? You're okay, then. She's pregnant. Captain Henry Jackson, there was a future for you. And then instead, you chose the past. Mr. Reedy, he cannot continue as he is. He cannot police with the hurt he now carries. And so, Abilene insists on our take his place. Take his place or cop no more. How does that notion now sit with you? Now that you and I are... Well, that we shall be together. If I had you beside me, Rose, that chair, it would hold no fears for me no more. I should get back. Um, I shall be here for you later, however. I know that also. What's your grinning if you see Miss Morton? She and the captain. No longer, it seems. What do you do? Miss Susan, apparently. Right. Will you tell me what Miss Morton said? Um, she said he... Left us wait in his rooms with Fred Best and... No. Jackson! Mr. Ackerman, what did he give you? Oh, do you mean amorously, Mr. Swift, or by way of disease? <laughs> You're a spry fellow, are you not, Mr. Best? Springing from one man's pillar to another's post. See this mandrake, this quick smuggler, they dance no more. No, no. <laughs> I will speak. You see, darling? He's not such an unreasonable fellow. <laughs> the floor is yours, Mr. Best. Let us end this dance now, shall we? <clears throat> I know what Ackerman did not know. Not till I told him. I know that your money, that all of your money was shipped here as bearer bonds to be cashed away from those that would bring you to heel. I know that she, your daughter, she saw a trench robbed from you. You shared this information with Mr. Rafferty? <sighs> May return, Mr. Best. What did he give you? What did he pass you in that kind of coop shop? Um, no, no, there, there was no time. He was not able. After all that effort, I do not believe you, Mr. Best. <laughs> I am, however, have a mind to show you. This is a British garment. Built for the conquest of all those who would stand in Britain's way. Well, I'm buying them now. And selling them to... To all those who would see such weaponry turned back on its creator. Myself, my shipping lines, we shall prove an effective quartermaster. But why would you tell me this if you... I do not mean to kill you. Well, who can tell? 
Perhaps I am dangerous. Let's see. I shall certainly kill you if you do not speak of who else you have shared your hard-won knowledge with. <laughs> I shall tell you. Only spare me. Tell me. And we shall see about that. Oh, I have told multitudes, Mr. Swift. I have told bin rakers, I have told sweeps, I have told every street Arab and mudlark from the Thames to the old nickel, from the city gates to the old Ford <laughs> Cold whip, slumbers, water, and coachmen, chars, flower girls, trotter scrapers. I have whispered it in their ears. I have howled it across tap roofs. And what is it you have told me? Oh, what indeed. <laughs> I shall tell you what Fred best in his love, in his benediction for each and every soul who must scrape and connive the way to this benighted part of the world. This is what he told them. Mr. Theodore Patrick Swift longs for nothing more in his life than a proud cock in one hole whilst he suckles from another in the other. You know, Mr. Best, I have not killed a man in my own 15 years. No, Theo! No! This man arrested, Inspector Dream. Obstruction of justice. Case. Attempted murder. <laughs> Whose? Yours, Mr. Reed. Ask him, sir. Ask him who he protects. I am not sure I need to. For now, there are other priorities currently upon us. With me, gentlemen. Swift, you know this how? 
see that. Geometry of the ballistic here. That's not many weapons, but one. The Maxim machine gun. A new weapon of choice for our Imperial forces. No longer just that. Drake the belongings you took from my rooms. Now I have them. Please. We both want to see this. You know what this is, don't you, Ray? Yes. It is a stand. Magnifying device, very powerful. It enables the viewing of micro photographs. There's a cargo manifest also. It records swift shipments from which he supplies anti imperialist forces worldwide. Anti British to the Niger, anti French to North Africa, and anti US to the Philippines. These weapons are stockpiled here in East London, sold to whoever bids highest or to whom might point such weapons at whoever it is he disdains. My father-in-law trades in death now. And he chooses Whitechapel as his command center. What can we tell him? Can we tie him to these? By motive, but there's nothing physical I can see. And we require an informant to someone who might speak against him. What he accuses you of is true. It is. Go on. It is Susan's thumbprint. On the gun that shot you. You removed it. You matched it. I think I must go speak to her, see if such a proving may bring her to our course. You do not ask how or for why, but it is yours, a fund for the clinic. This, more important. Miss Susan, this, why would you abandon us? It is not an abandoning, it is only your sovereignty. Yours, Dr. Frey. Good morning, Miss Susan. Good morning, Matilda. I am astonished, madam, that you would come here now. Might we speak? Please, Jane. Veralia, I am so, so sorry. For much else besides, but I hope... It removes the tenement lands from the title of obsidian and transfers it to yours. Oh, please, Jane. Only listen. Where I have failed, you must now succeed. Do you understand? myself in, your girl. Sent her away. And your father? He now takes up the suite at the Athenaeum. I cannot let you leave, madam. The surgeon has told you, then? Not by his own choosing. He was discovered and Inspector Drake as a way of extracting the truth. Please, Inspector. Do not perform a dance for him. No dance. You're Mr. Judge. So long as I have known him, his actions have had many a root, but a black heart is not one. A black heart. Tell you it was so simple. You might hunt out villainy with ease for your cells, and allow the good people of this earth to walk forever unmolested. There are times, however, when it is perhaps as simple as all that. One looks at another man and knows that he is for naught but iniquity in this world. In many ways, it is a gift to be shown such. A gift we should not run from, but welcome. My life, Miss Susan, a policeman's life, we look for pattern. 
the show us our path, pattern, form, a design. And so here, I offer you one such. You and your Mr. Capshaw set men to thee from your father. The cataclysm that ensued sees Mr. Buckley and his wife bankrupted, and in that bankrupting, Obsidian Estates absorbs their shop, and so reveals the discovery of all that lay within. My daughter. Pattern. The design inspector. Who's? Who can say? But was it mere accident that saw neither of your shots hit their mark? It was my husband taught me to shoot. I didn't think him inaccurate in his teaching. Unless, of course, he thought that one day you might have cause to shoot at him. <laughs> I wonder, do you, do you consider us tragedians caught in some farce? Because you, despite the concessions you've made to survive in this world of ours, I know your intentions have been for the benefit of all. And yet one act damns me. Take from a man, my cruel father, whose money is made on nothing more than the blood and toil of others. And then I am drowned in a tide of slaughter. I think of nothing but the protection of my world from a man who ripped the sex and entrails from five young women. And in my fevered pursuit, my eye is turned and my daughter lost. Gone. Until your incidental calamity, my turns, brings her back to me. It is as you say, Mr. Reed. We are caught in the teeth of some grotesque. Damned if we do, and damned if we do not. We might act now, however. Rest some measure of control back to ourselves. See good. Why do you send for me? She does not. Swift. Idle. Police, Katie. You lost yourself. No, Theodore. Quite the reverse. Kill this cop for me, will you? Theodore. You, you are finished? Yes. Mr. Swift, I expect I am. You see, there is something I've had too many occasions to learn when a man such as yourself is concerned. The law cannot constrain you. You fucking right, policeman. So, you drop this now. Or prepare for the wrath of God to fall on your shoulders. No. Because you see, this is the lesson. Evil men need evil ends. What is this, Caitlin? We, Inspector and I, we wish to show you somewhere. A place that's come to mean much to us both. A place where a little girl was kept. What 
your instruction, Father, while Pier is shut down. You will not to be sold through for weeks. You make yourself at home, sir. You come again. One minute. The heart back, Father. This does not end this way. Theodore Swift does not end this way. Then how, sir? It is only the suicide chooses their conclusion. Caitlin, think of what you do. I am blood. It is your family you kill here. No. It is my family I keep safe. What make of woman are you? I'm your father, damn you! I need you! Inspector, defense from the Wentworth Street Elder, a runner comes, sir. Constable Grace brings him to ground. Yours, I believe, to make a drink. Choice. I wish you well with the train. London will remember him for this, that he was the detective who, alongside Detective Inspector Frederick Aberline, led to the pursuit of the man we at the star named Jack the Ripper. But whilst his streets might in the years since have found some measure of recovery, it is this obituarist's fear that Edmund Reed did not. I shall race you, my daddy. If there is justice where he now walks, it might be that the care which he wore so heavily will be lifted from him. <laughs> Those who knew him, those who did not. Those who may have only seen him stride past in pursuit of whatever villainy beset him that day. He might offer a prayer for him. And this might be our prayer for peace. For his peace. We, the children of the East, of the docksides, highways, rookeries and laneways, we pray for the peace of Edmund Reed.